Hey future pros, back on Nuke today and I have another slick smoke to help you with your tea side. Playing Nuke can feel like hell, but with this heaven smoke, you'll be winning round after round. The first step to executing this smoke is to shoot out the back left skylights. Once done so, run along to silo and position yourself over this line. Aim just to the left of the second rail post and slightly above the roof. Find mouse 1 on your gaming mouse and then press it. And just like that, heaven will be perfectly smoked. ESL 1 New York is brought to you in part by Intel, Logitech G, Republic of Gamers, GoDaddy, and StubHub. The GoDaddy Post-Match Breakdown. The American flag is flying high in game one. It is Team Liquid that have taken the first map in this best of three elimination match. Remember, the team that loses is done already at ESL 1 New York 2017. Back with Thorin and uh, Sponge here at the desk. Um, there were moments in there you worried for Liquid again, but this time they've closed it out. The choke did look real, but they're actually yeah. just being sensible, right? Where they took that double eco yep. late in the second half and then got the two ops up on JDM and Nitro once more. And then JDM actually had a little bit of impact. He had like nine kills before he got the orb up in the second half. And then from there, I think he only got up to 13, but they were crucial to yep. help them close Big out kills. the game. So he wasn't a huge player in the match, but he didn't need to be for mm -hmm. the most part. They had Stan doing a lot of work on the T side. Twist was getting a lot done from that pit position. And all in all, it's pretty solid uh, defense and, and attack from yeah. Guys and Liquid. Uh, and Duncan... Not particularly good again from Virus Pro, but if they've, they've showed us something, it's a little bit yeah. resilience at least. Uh, I mean, at the start of the game, I actually feel really sorry for Pasha in, in where he is in his career at the moment because he's turned his whole game around. Late yeah. last yeah. year, actually, in the summer, kind of was when he picked it up again, started to get good. Ever since then, he's been one of the better players in the team. He was playing like it was a flashback to 2014, yeah. exactly that style on Inferno, aggressive orping. He was doing really, really well. And his, his, his entire performance amounted to nothing because... Snacks could barely get any kills. They're having real problems in terms of firepower on this team. It's only really Pasha and Bialy getting anything done, you know? And actually, I'm glad to see Pasha back on the AWP. You know, Snacks, since he's in the slump, I mean, you don't want him with the AWP. You know, it's not yeah. working for him. So, like, this, this is like classic from when they won the Major back in kind of, say, 2014. Yeah, it's true, though. Yes, you're right. Towards the end of the game, they were coming back into it. It looked like maybe they could have done it, but they had left it pretty late, you know? Yeah. Well, it had to have been like a vintage performance to come back in. At the moment, even though this was Liquid's pick, despite some of the uh, overlay mishaps we had, you feel like this next map, I, I feel like Liquid could do it. I think they can just close right. VP out here and, and this may well just be the end of VP. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with the, with Pasha's statement and I think he was playing that arch side with the AW perfectly. That's how you want to see him doing it, constantly pivoting around between mini pit and aggressive on middle. He was picking up a lot of frags there, but it's going to be hard to carry that across to nuke, right? Mm. It's not a map where the AWP gets as many opportunities as he did and he had a, he had a blistering CT half and it only amounted to like very few rounds yeah. so I don't see how unless Snacks really turns up and he's a pivotal uh, pivotal part for on the, these guys on Nuke right we saw uh, dropping down that T event how important that was against I think it was North um, to, to really fluster rotations um, when they have matchups on this one so if he's not on and he's not able to get his timings right they're going to really struggle because that's such a huge opening for Virtus Pro on this map mm. let's talk uh, positive stuff right now Team Liquid in terms of the fact that they have closed it out and, and as you've already mentioned Nitro having some key rounds and also Stan as well yeah, he's, he's, uh, Lurk was actually working pretty well. And Inferno is a map where I think they had a really good uh, mix-up of strategies. They were doing a lot of explosions. They were taking it, the advantage of the fact they didn't have anybody holding in apps quite a lot. And, and when you have rounds like that and someone's able to, to peel out, this pistol round made no sense to me. I think the, the flash must have missed, but they're all running through the smoke into the site. It just felt a little bit awkward. I think the idea was cool, but in, in the end, there was execute was, was the, the mishap. So. Yeah, and uh, clutches as well. Stan showing us that you can, you can pull off the old clutch when he needs to. Yeah, he's a pretty cerebral player. That's mm. why I can see why, actually. Because, actually, you made the point earlier. It's, it's absolutely correct. He wasn't even an in-game leader until, basically, yeah. la late last year when yeah. Optic was actually in a position where they wanted to remove their in-game leader, and it was like, well, who's going to take over that role? So I can see why, as an individual player, he, he's someone you think of as more of a smart player, can kind of read the game. He took it over, and, okay, for a while, he was good. But 
I don't really know that it suits his game overall in as much as you can see what he can actually do individually. Like, he already was a bit of an anomaly. If you ever looked up how much, like, his fragging stats were for an in-game leader, he was much better than most of the European in-game leaders that you think of as very, very good. So, clearly, individually, he can bring a lot to this team. And it does feel as though taking that weight off Nitro's shoulders has helped them. They've they've gotten quite a lot of T rounds in these Mm. games we've seen already. So, I kind of like the change for Team Liquid. Obviously, not going to go too crazy about being VP because... It's been happening quite a lot recently for a lot of teams, but even so, positive signs that you think you can take on into future matches in the rest of the tournament and hopefully closing this series out to zero. Yeah, uh, we should mention for those at home uh, that aren't aware, of course, that um, it, it is a change that is 50-50 um, between both Stanislaw and Nitro in that team as an in-game leader. Um, they've kind of split the... I think yes. I think Nitro said he, he will often call the first and then Stan will call maybe late rounds, maybe yes. the last parts of it. So. I think the notion was, the idea is that like Nitro does the tactic. He does. Yeah. He probably does the work with Zeus. He said it's Nitro and Elise, you watch their demos, they study the game. But the concept is one of the trickiest things to do as an in-game leader, and some never learn this skill, is like, how do you make the mid-round call? Yeah. How do you read what's happening and go, no, let's go away from what we were doing? And what's the idea now? You've got to come up with something on the fly. Yeah. So if Stanislaw, first of all, even just his role, if he's the lurker on a lot of maps, he can make a lot of great calls just from that. You know, he's flanked in, he's got some information, he knows where they aren't. I think it's it's a clever way to divide up responsibility mm. because at the moment, when you hear all these teams saying, oh, there's no good in-game leaders, well, that's another solution. You can get a couple of people, figure out who's strong at what, and then split the tasks up. It doesn't have to be one guy, you know. That's an old way of thinking. It works, yeah, if you've got some genius guy who can do everything in the game. Not a lot, of, not even a lot of in-game leaders have all the skills. Yeah. Mm. Uh, moving on to Nuke, we've got a, a minute or so before they're ready to go live. Um, Duncan's already mentioned that he thinks Liquid could take this, but this is this is a map that Virtus Pro love. Yeah, we've seen VP run over top tier opponents, you know, this year on this map, and they've definitely been slumping. And for them to still bring out uh, big performances on this one, it, it fills me with a little bit of confidence. And for me, they actually have a lot of depth on this map, right? They can actually pull out a huge amount of execute. Something that I really like from them. This was the early days of Nuke was they would fake a top execute, they would draw the outside or mini player to actually his attention there and, and push people around catwalk and do a top split that way. And that was something really cool. So the thing I think you have to watch out for Liquid, uh, if you're Liquid, is what kind of approach a VP going to come in with? Because in the past, they've got the snacks down the vent. That's one way they do it. They like to do the set smokes outside to draw rotators. And they also like to just, you know, go ramp and bust straight through that smoke. So mm. I think aggression could be a really good sign for Liquid on the CT side. If they want to push in, you can probably take down these players on, on VP who aren't fragging so strong. Give yourself that early number advantage and go from there. And this is another map where Liquid, they actually do try and enable... Uh, JDM as much as possible, right? I've seen them with a couple of moves to help him go for picks. Netting open squeaky door for him, letting him go for the pick there, boosting him outside in multiple different locations, a little bit quirky. Uh, if they can activate him, because he didn't have a great Inferno game, yeah. and then he can be fragging along the likes of uh, Stan, Elige, Twist, with looking like it could be a 2 up. Uh, quickly, Duncan, why can Liquid win on Nuke? First of all, they already like to play the map. Sure, VP is very strong at it traditionally. I also think when you look at this particular map, this is a great example of where I think that that Mykonos loss in the fifth map there could have done them a huge favor. It showed them all their flaws. Yep. It'll give them a notion of what they need to tweak out. Also, you've got that in the back of your mind. Like, we're not going to let this happen twice. Like, if we're going to play this map, remember, they could have banned it. They, they absolutely, essentially, were saying to Virtus Pro, pick it if you want to. Absolutely. So I actually feel like they were they thought that. We'll win Inferno, and then we'll get a free chance to maybe win the series on Nuke. And so you start CT side, you get a good roll going. You can be absolutely confident you can win this game, even though it's Virtus Pro. All right, good stuff. Uh, time to head back to our commentary team for game number two. Can Liquid wrap things up? Let's find out. Yeah, we are going to find out any second now. It does seem as though the teams are raring to go at this point too. So, Virtus Pro coming into Nuke. Let's let's kind of make a, a point of why people get a little excited for seeing Virtus Pro on Nuke. Why does this map still sit so well with them? Why is it one that seems to retain that original Virtus Pro record or reputation? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I mean, it is a map they've always been good on. Uh, I think the big thing stems from the fact that they're so good on the CT side. And you see it even with NIP, even through their struggles, they were still a very dangerous nuke team because they're so well practiced on all the rotations and, and their communication is on point and they just feel very, very comfortable on this map. But I mean, obviously here it might not matter to start with because VP is going to start on the terrorist side and actually a weird situation outside. JDM getting caught off guard, players on top. Eliminate JDM and Elige. They wanted to get aggressive, but they get caught in no man's land, and now the entire lower bomb site is lost. Yeah, it is bomb to be planted as well. Five alive. Ooh. And this is brutal. This is this is sending a message. This could be uh, going all three series. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, they're, like, starting, they're starting out early, aren't yeah, they? They're, they're giving a message um, that you shouldn't have picked this. But you, if, as said, there was brought up on the desk. Um, if you're coming into this map, you've got to know why. 
you can't y you can't leave it open against first pro and not expect them to go to it. Right. So Liquid do surely Listen, have an idea. At least we got it figured out that it wasn't Team Liquid that picked this map. So <laughs> that would have just been madness. I'm just glad we, we fixed that yeah. up. Yeah, that was that was curious for a little while, wasn't it? I think Nitro just keeps the CZ. Why are you even doing anything? You know, going to the next round, you'll have a CZ. You don't have to spend money on it. You can get an armor. You can get utility. He's going to go for the fight, and he's going to get dropped in one shot by Bialy. Close range with the USP. 0-2-1. Virtus Pro takes the terror side pistol round. Um, you know, I'm not sure if that uh, that aggression... We saw Team Liquid. They've had some... Um, I don't want to say gimmicky, but they've had some interesting pistol rounds so far today. I remember against Astralis, they had three players stacked up on Ticket Booth. That worked really well. Yeah. Uh, on Inferno, their CT pistol round was four players get aggressive on Banana together, and two players push down to the base, two rotate back towards A. That worked very well. And this time, they pushed two players outside. So, you know, sometimes you, you might say that kind of a play just indicates that they think, that, like, you know, since they're going to be underdogs, essentially, on Nuke against Virtus Pro, that maybe they have to pull out some of those gimmicks. But, I, I mean, it just keeps up with the trend of doing CT pistol rounds that, you know, aren't necessarily expected. Okay. First strike will at least work in favor of Liquid this time. Elish to find Pasha. Not a bad uh, scalp to claim if you're going by last map's performance. Let's try and keep him quiet. As we do have a pause coming in for next round. And it was cancelled. So, no, no worries. All's good. Maybe a little bit of a misclick. Fat finger, I think. Uh, presses the wrong button. Hmm. <laughs> Regardless. Pause is going to be coming out, and Liquid now with that one kill, with that man advantage, they just slink back, and they want to make Virtus.pro commit somewhere. Nitro is aggressive in the hut, JDM's in vents, Twist is in upper. The main point that they're going to suffer from is Heaven. I believe Virtus.pro, if Neo goes up that way, there's no one really covering that. Twist is spotting it from range, but Neo with his AK-47 should have a field day, and that would just systematically eliminate the upper defense. They've just got to wait for it to come fruition. There goes Nitro inside hut. Here's Neo peeking out. There's the... Well, Snacks takes care of it anyway. That's, uh... Could be the round, although Elish does have a Galil. He could do more damage. Snacks is low. Kind of need him to at this point. If, if they want any shot of it, it's got to be quite fast. Again, seconds away from spotting a player over by Heaven, but... Just moves away from it. Two still towards sight as well. Yeah, how much he's going to get out of this? I really don't. Stands there with him, needed that clean first kill, open up a window of opportunity and then build off the back. But without that, the three will probably stay alive unless Stan can maybe catch Snacks in the heels or someone on the way out from the site. Yeah, Stan's trying to find a timing and Snacks is just walking. Now he picks up the speed. Oh, it just missed. So he gets around the corner. There's nothing really left for Stan to do. So just bail out. Make sure you keep that armor, that CZ. Second round for Virtus Pro. They do lose two, but that's not a huge deal at all. No, they'll be perfectly fine. 6k still on Taz. Pash is a little lower than he'd probably like, but it's not the end of the world. Snacks going to go for the old uh, sword off. Where the hell? Oh, I guess down bed. Has he got the spawn for it? No. He could. That is that is interesting. Going. Uh, well, I mean, it is some, maybe he's just assuming nuke. He'll get some close range battles. But yeah, if he goes into upper and they're in awkward spots. Yeah, uh, although I'm sweet, so yeah. God. Great call. Thanks. He's away. And he's got he's got the Kraken, so it's like the JW one on Cobb. I'm not gonna lie to you, the Kraken is my favorite skin in the game. It looks amazing, doesn't yeah, it? It's great. It actually looks so badass. Um skins aside, haven't checked the new skins out. I haven't either. I'm actually gonna sell all my I uh, actually I I'm saw I think a tweet of uh, someone put out like a Jeff of all cycling through all mm. the new skins. There's actually a pretty cool uh AK skin. Oh. Right. We'll uh, see if anyone's gonna Oh they can't use it in this version, can they? Because it's I don't know how that rollback. works. I don't know how that works with the skins. Damn. Well, all of that aside, the reason I talk nonsense is because one, we have Snacks holding a rotate from upper three vents. So, you know, he is literally the crack and lurking in the depths. Oh, he's and a uh, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what game were we playing? It was just like a hovering dude facing you off the ladder, <laughs> fighting with a shotgun in the vent. It just, you know, in, in actual fact, it does sound very strange, doesn't it? But all said and done, this is a, a very decent round for Furtis, probably keeping it clean enough. Um, not being too threatened. If anything, the, the better benefit from it would have been Taz getting a couple of those kills, build up some more funds. Um, but, you know, it's not the end of the world losing out on one as they do try and so cleanly. Oh, Lord, that miscommunication was awful. Obviously, Snacks didn't want to shoot through the back of Neo there or, you know, clip the side of him. But Got a little excited. He, he pulled the trigger, yeah. trigger early. It, it happens to everyone at some point. Um, 
And yeah, that would've been great to get the extra bonus money off that shotgun. 3-0, uh, now we're gonna get into the gun round. The Don't M4 avoid eye out. contact with me after you <laughs> say these things. Dear Lord. <laughs> Uh, all the M4s on the board. No ADVP on JDM quite yet. We've seen that pretty much throughout all three of their maps with their second round buys. They, they don't get the up, uh, you know, out on the fields too early. And here it is. Bialy's going to jump on top of Silo. There's still a MAC-10 in play off on Pasha. There's some aggression outside. Liquid maybe deciding since they don't have the op, maybe they just don't want to fight aggressively. So Virtus Pro is going to get Yard. Actually, I think JDM might be... Is he pushed up or is he lower? He's pushed up indeed. You don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mm, that was not too pleasant to see. Poor old JDM. Uh, yeah. Pasha, he's actually... He's barely even tagged him, really. It's like 34 HP left. No, I mean, that definitely that has to be a kill. Uh, that that yeah. has to be something you get from that's That's good positioning as well. Doesn't work out, so how does Liquid adjust and recover from here? Man down situation. I think the big player, Stanislaus, is under ladder. Twist is in the upper bomb site. Elise is in vents, and Nitro is inside the upper bomb site. So, decent setup here, but it's going to be a ramp room take from Taz leading the way with that MAC 10. Pasha there with him, heading towards ramp as you highlight. Bialy watching for that rotate, seeing if he can catch anyone trying to play around. And he might be Stan the first to you know, reach a bit of contact here, and well, he loses out to Taz with a Mac 10. That's that no head armor. You can see yeah. the aim just goes straight up Punches. into the air immediately, and there's no one really to there's no one to watch this lower bomb site now. Uh, Elijah's down there. He's on the staircase though. He's watching for secret, so they're going to lose this site because the other two players haven't budged. They're still in the upper bomb site, and it might be a situation where unless Elijah goes hero mode. They just give up this round, and he's dropped immediately in response by Pasha. Nitro still going in quite quick, and finding Neo this fast might keep them around here. I, I, I don't see this happening with the orb still up and everything said and done. It's very hard for them to play retake on this. You have to give this up if you're if you're Liquid. They have no kits, they have no utility, and Pasha's and we go. got that vantage point with the AWP from far back. So, I mean, there's never zero percent chance. I've, I've, learned, oh, that. I've learned that yeah, the hard yeah, way. Yeah. I've done that in the past. Uh, not going to say zero, but it's not likely. So, seeing what they keep over. This is the first you know, real kind of gun round into this sort of thing, and seeing... At the moment, Virtus Pro is still maintaining quite nicely, and, and and I don't know what to see as like the change point for Liquid. I, I I'm going to assume that once JDM gets that, or maybe oh even a double or you know, whatever it is, once they get to that, we might see a, res a bit of resilience. And he was being shot. At the the reason it didn't work out at the end because he was being shot from above. So I guess the aim punch to a degree, even though small or you know whatever it is. You're really trying to help him out there, aren't you? Yeah, he should have <laughs> killed Pasha like instantly, <laughs> but. It's tough sometimes, you know? Yes. It's tricky. Um, but yeah, as said, I I, I, I don't know what to, have, what to expect from Liquid sometimes because it feels like they, they rebuild up late, they wait for those orbs to come out, and then they come back into games. But I don't know if they can do it against BP or Nuke. Bialy already to strike first, find a leash, but Nitro's not going to go down without a fight. He does find a little bit of work towards Bialy, so off one trade, but how is Snacks here? Yeah, it is the same play to with a shotgun. Just get down Vent. He'll Bloody be doing hell. this a lot, I'm assuming, in this half. Yeah. Here's the cool thing, is Virtus Pro going towards the ramp room. Nitro and JDM are both here. They need to have success. They can shut this down. It's a great shot from Nitro. Fade him into JDM, although he can't do anything with the pistol. This is where you imagine. Snacks is going to pounce, and he's in perfect position. Even Molotoving off Vent. So clear avenue into the lower bomb site for VP. It's a two on three scenario. Can he stop this? No, he does massive damage. He eventually gets the kill. They can go for this now. This could be... This could turn into something for Team Liquid as Stanislaw and Twist meet up behind the vents. You still have Snacks to deal with. And you still have Taz as well. There goes Stanislaw baiting. Twist is going to win that out. No kit. This has got to come quickly. Taps the ball, but he's not aware of Taz's location. Brilliant positioning from Taz, and VP is rolling. Yeah, they really are. Looking pretty solid overall. The way they're approaching the game seems robust. Haven't, even though it's gone close, we've seen the 1v1s come down to right at the end. It still doesn't feel like it's all that close. It feels like it's quite controlled. But maybe this is the fight back. We finally see that all with JDM. This is the exciting part for me. We've seen every single game that they played, and once you know they get to this, once they start maybe looking towards a double up down the line, they've got full utility. This is where it becomes pretty important. It's, it's imperative to the way they play this out. Again, utility is a huge factor. I highlighted it when it was on Inferno because you can apply it here and then. So it's the biggest example. 
You need those Molotovs, you need those nades. That's the way you can slow down Snacks from getting the control through vents. That's how you do it. Or you send JDM in. He's going to get a good tag towards Taz and keep that door safe for now. But here comes the Flash Force him away. Neo's already found a kill as well towards Elige. Where was that? That was outside. Oh. Rough. Yep, Neo's up top. Yeah, I mean, that's a couple of rounds that JDM might be getting a little frustrated. Obviously, the, the missed kill onto Pasha previously, and this time he legs Taz, so nothing going right for the upper of Team Liquid. At the moment, here comes a lot of utility from Virtus Pro being used to this upper bombsite. Twist has nice positioning, though. That's inside the door. He could catch him off guard. Taz is aware it's a possibility. Flashbang comes in, but it doesn't work. He turns in time and then adjusts to find snacks. Bialy is the real man here. This this could end the round. Not an easy shot to make though. Nitro gonna claim a life of two here and just leave Pasha and Taz <laughs> all alone. That's so cheesy. Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> Nitro's mean. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, you're exactly right. There's not an easy shot behind that forklift where it just seems like it's an yep. impen impenetrable force. 5-0 in Virtus Pro. Taz and Pasha just going to keep these weapons in hand because despite winning five straight, the money is not great. Outside of Taz, who's got, you know, 11,000 at the moment, he'll keep that obviously with the, you know, surviving. He won't get the bonus, but, I mean, that's plenty of money to be able to drop guns over. They're going to have another solid buy going on. And Team Liquid, this is where, <laughs> this is that round where it's just like, could be the nightmare scenario. They have to string them together. They can't lose this one. Yep. But at least, uh, at least they're on the board now. First one's Absolutely. the hardest. Absolutely. And if they do manage to grind it back, this is from the other perspective, it is really hard hit shots to this angle because you can see the amount of cover <laughs> that's between Especially them. Especially because he's like... He's, he's moving as well. They're like, yeah. Well, the best part is he's like spotting first, right? So even if they check it, they probably... It's probably not the easiest thing to see. No, it's really not. Was it Smiths who did that first? I, I think so. Like, he's just sat he's back ruined the map for everybody. Yeah, he? <laughs> it's just like the no fun police has arrived. Basher with the orb now. Can we take a little look through Squeaky? And the sounds confuse me greatly. Is it just switches back into... That was out of sync, right? Like, I'm yes. not actually going to... Was going to play. Wonderful. Okay, Nitro, the Define Neo to begin with. Oh, I lose my mind. Not so slowly. And the four players remain from VP. Finally, it feels that maybe Liquid have a bit of a, a handle on the early game. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, it's great they don't get punished by Pasha there with that peak. Even throwing in a nade, getting some chip damage in on him. The Opera VP down to 44. Snacks is... In a pretty aggressive lurking position. It's a liege out here who's watching for this, and he's got a great vantage point. Everyone from VP just watching. Oh, that's Nitro with two kills. He's got three in the round. They try and come out the door. He punishes them. There's a fourth. He can go for the ace here, and he's going to get it. All five kills for Nitro. A huge hold in a round. We said they needed to string them together, and he steps up in a big way. From zero to 100, really, that guy went off. It was just like there was nothing happening on the map. They try and make that quick hit, and here we see it again. That off angle playing from the back of Squeak. He comes back in, finding two so perfectly, and then everything else just falls so brilliantly into place. Just very well handled by him. He's gonna, I mean, you know, we talked a lot about how he seemed to like just kind of be a little lost in this team, and he was having a rough time on an individual level finding his place, and I mean, he seems to be doing well so far here in New York. Nice pick from JDM as they try and cross over towards Redbox. Even the Molotov is going to come out, but it's extinguished right into the smoke it goes. And let's remind ourselves, if you're just tuning in, this is, you know, an imperative match for both teams. They need this victory to stay alive within this tournament. Yeah, I mean, this is this is big for both teams, obviously. I mean, you think, one, you're playing for elimination, so Virtus Pro on the back foot. If they lose Nuke, they're eliminated from New York. Um, even if you win, even if you're one of the teams that win the series, this becomes a marathon day because you're going to be playing a BO3 next against Astralis. Uh, and you've already yep. played, what, two best of ones, potentially three maps here. So that's when uh, you really have to stay focused throughout a very long day of Counter-Strike. Not an easy route for either team to take. Three to five, and we're going to have a timeout. From Virtus Pro, starting to figure out, uh, you know, what they're seeing from this defense, different ways they can manipulate it, different areas they can get opening kills. What do they want to change? Yeah, I, I am interested to see if they have much to kind of go to now. Like, what's what's their fullback? It, it, like to me, it just seems that once they got utility, once they got the orbs and you know, yard control going on, a little bit of a challenge on it, it actually became really, really viable for just good CS from Liquid. Like, it wasn't. I said anything too quirky, they just, just had the tools they needed. So I'm wondering what the, the answer is here for VP. How do they face this one out? 
There, there's, uh, yeah, and I mean, that's a good timeout to take this early because they're still sitting very, very nice. Five rounds at this point in the game is is, is good. You're going to be happy with that on a T side. Uh, you don't want to get into a situation where you just start bleeding and like lose the next six or seven rounds yeah. or so. Obviously wanting to inch that score up as much as possible. Going for a boost, giving Pasha the time to try and work a pick outside. But, I mean, as we've seen from Liquid throughout this half, they're not really challenging it. Even when JDM has the AWP, he's playing back passive. towards CT spawn. Yeah, we mm -hmm. saw Nitro over at the forklift. We saw Liege at, a, at an off angle pretty much very, very far back. So, Liquid is not really throwing a strong defense outside. No. no we are seeing the deeper smokes. One down towards the locker room to cover that off. JDM now adjusts vision. Tries to support towards the upper site and sees if anyone's there. Pasha now controls that angle and JDM actually commits towards site. So it joins him on the ground. Yeah, they've they've switched Stannis line to that position. The M4 able to be more versatile and watching towards top of heaven. Because uh, as you can see, Virtus Pro wrapping around these rafters. You want the M4 in that position, not the AWP. Mm. Well, that's a good find. Stan with one. He's not aware there's another one, but Nitro again doing work. Taz. He's on his way in. Stanislaw, where is his attention brought to? This is a very difficult round to read if you're Team Liquid. Uh, and the observers, bless their hearts. This is great <laughs> fun for them, isn't it? <laughs> Elise is already down lower. He's found his way over towards the door. It's been open from the inside. He peeks out. Oh, he doesn't get the kill. He had an opportunity. So yeah, Neil's down to 19. Oh, twist. twist through the flames, catches, snacks off guard. But yeah, this is hectic now, isn't it? One on one. But he even got that information. Him taking that fight, even at the end, he didn't mean to. It just set up Stan to be able to find that kill towards Taz. But would you expect Neo on the site? Neo doesn't expect him. He sees the feet. That's been called. Stan knows where Neo is now, and Neo might not be so aware. Stan needs to time this perfectly. He needs to fight. Oh, and Neo's so quick. That could have been everything for Stan. And he went for the drop. He went for the quicker play. And it didn't work out. Yeah, he had everything. He, yeah, he had definitely called out by a teammate. He doesn't notice it. Uh, and then once eventually, he doesn't know exactly. I mean, you can get all the information. They could say he's beneath you, but you don't know exactly what that means. And dropping down gives Neo the time to react. Very, very good in the clutch situations is Neo, and that's a sixth for VP. That's tough to swallow because Liquid had to really battle into that round, and they almost salvaged it. Almost Pasha, though, looking a little bit quicker. Actually, the two players here. From Liquid. What? How does Pasha read this? I do not know. Sprays in, gets two, and gets away with it. I don't know if he heard a connection or a net. I do. I literally could not tell you why that worked out that time. Yeah, sometimes it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying you get a little lucky, but brilliant from Pasha. Two kills there, and this is already a round loss for Team Liquid. Picking up the pace as far as pro. Pasha's going to get a third. Turn in the corner. JDM's not expecting it. Misses the shot. That's, this is tough to swallow for Liquid, who felt like they had just gotten a grasp on this game at three rounds in a row. Now it's taken away from them. And I believe they're going to be pretty much out of money after yeah. this. They could buy up if they want. Stan and Twist are sitting at the high 3,000s at the moment, so they're getting more. But do they really want to invest everything into having those guys with the strongest buys and everyone else stuck on weaker weaponry? And that's mad, though, isn't it? They also put two players towards ramp, and that's where Verspro were going towards. So they, they had it in the right place. Nitro fighting hard to keep hold of that rifle. This twist might be asked the same question if he wasn't careful. But no one's that close by, so both teams will stay alive with what we have on our screens here. The first pro's money is certainly very much on the cusp. Let's watch this again from his point of view. Just sprayed it. Yep. To be fair, I think Elise shot back and he just saw the Grace of Fire. Yeah. But the first kill and the instant adjust, assuming it's a double stack, that's nice. Yes, I mean, that's very good. Why, why not just take the shot? You're, you are, in a way, protected by that smoke, but, I mean, it can get into a dangerous spam battle at that point. Either way, Pasha comes out on top. I think the big thing um, for Team Liquid now is one thing that's that Virtus Pro has always had, Snacks has been able to pretty much control door. For, he's been able to get out door and get into vents. That previous round, since Pasha yeah. had all the action, we didn't see it. But Snacks did sneak into vents, and he did the old trick with the knife out, you know, the instant stab from beneath. Uh, so he's just waiting. Mm. He's just using that to cut off rotations. And that's that's the thing that makes Virtus Pro. You asked that question when this started. What makes Virtus Pro so good on this map? Well, they have so much experience playing it that, you know, it, it's hard for new teams with the communication, with inexperienced teams together to have the proper comms and able to be able to manage, you know, the fact that the bomb sets are stacked on top of mm. each other. Virtus Pro does it so well. And they can really, really manipulate teams into being drawn directly to where they want on the map. And NIP does the same exact thing. So it's just something with the experience on this map. Ooh, is this a nice quick round? It is. Snacks is away. UMP to hand dives down to the vents, but it was Pasha just holding the back behind him. No one could then follow through. He was the support system to it, but it did get found by Nitro, who's been great as well at guarding that door. He got that ace bait from that position too. So back down to a 4v4. 
Now they don't know if Snacks really had much with him. He's you know he's kind of been a nuisance here by getting into the vents. A bit of a worry in the back of their minds. Snacks actually dives back up. They're going to hit up from the back of this. Players up in the rafters as well. One being a leash. There is someone on the side, but a leash does enough. Keeps their attention turned. But Nitro, I thought he could have maybe a little more there, but he did buy time for a little bit more attention to be put from JDM towards the upper side. Snacks, that's a great kill. One on one with JDM, and this is a tough situation for an opera. You don't know where exactly he is. You don't want to miss. Snacks is waiting for the peak, and there it is. JDM falls into the trap. So patient with Snacks. And an eighth round, Liquid looked like they were going to have that one in the bag. And now they're just out of options. Three to eight. They're going to be forced onto pistols. They've gone for the nuke on nuke. <laughs> <laughs> Take a nap. I need one. <laughs> I've, I've had four hours sleep, basically. Let me nap. <laughs> Nade stack outside, unfortunately, VP's not heading there. There it is, all four nades, maybe even five, and VP hears all this, and they just, uh, you know, they can choose to go wherever they want from here. Yeah, it's, it, it's all theirs. Um, <laughs> nothing really worked out for them, did it? Uh, twist, though, that's not bad at all. He could have maybe got a little more for that, but Elige left now in the 1v3. I, I doubt much is going to stick for me. Maybe we'll get one, maybe a bit more costly, or do a little something. Uh, at this point in the game, you know... <laughs> Economic damage is it's all well and really good. Enough, it's just, it's just it? not enough anymore. No. Need a little more. Need the rounds. Yep. <sighs> that being said, it would be nice to do some economic damage. <laughs> 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 oh, Liege up above heaven with the Deagle. And VP is just slow playing this. This has got to be so frustrating. When you're in like a Liege's position and you're down three day, you're just like, why aren't they doing anything? Like, why are they being quiet? Why are they still walking? <laughs> Uh, you see, you don't even touch it like, why are they being so keen? But it's like, oh, yeah, the, their tournament life depends on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, right. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. I'll allow that to happen. And the leash creeping oh, around the corner. Can't do anything. Bound by Taz claimed. As we do see a stretch now beginning for Virtus Pro. Nine rounds to the good for them. And here we get to see that nice little lineup. Ah, oh, twist. This is very nice. Yeah, shoulder very, peak very into nice. the ultimate. That's good stuff. You seem to really enjoy that. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, off out on JDM, shotgun on Stanislaw. Three M4s as well. Three to nine, Liquid's got to rattle some off if they want a chance into the second half, into their own terrorist half. Still not really mounting a strong defense outside. No one peeking it. I mean, it seems like... Well, actually, here's a lead jump on the Raptors, peering down into the smoke. Oh, there's a gap there. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Flashbangs don't blind him. A triple kill. A Liege is a monster on these Raptors, and that's just what Liquid needed. That was second to none. I don't know how they're always in seemingly in the right place at the right time, but he was. <laughs> Those flashes were just, you know, that was the first time they really played the rafters as well. Yeah. Or at least, you know, on the CT side. Liquid haven't been putting a player up there, but oh. no better time to try it out. And Yali, having a wonder. The right thing is oh, that a nice peek, and I chose there. He was there to help out if it needed. Wasn't, wasn't necessary, but... Still, finds a kill on Pasha, it's just Bialy left. Yeah, the cool thing for Elyse as well is he's playing that position outside on Balcony, but he's looking at a gap in the smokes. Those smokes weren't thrown, like, perfectly, so he mm. can see there might be a possibility of seeing a shoulder as they run by, uh, of getting a kill as they go through, and, I mean, just turning the corner, they just walk right into his crosshair. You can see here, his attention is on the smokes, and then I think he hears a footstep right at the last second adjust, and it's easy from there. Flashbang doesn't bother him whatsoever. Really nice adjustment even on the third player of finding gear. It's like he was running across like the balcony ledge, like the handrail almost. So yep. it's just really nice. Now, these are the s well, some of the same smokes, the quicker smokes towards the outside area. So they're just going to run it now. They're running down secret. JDM probably won't be able to get a glimpse. I'm pretty sure the smokes are up properly this time, but I'm wondering who's quick to secret. Who from the CT side will be down there first and foremost? It's been a leash previously. Oh, there's Pasha this time. He doesn't win the battle. Not lucky through the smoke. Good find from Elish. That kind of puts a halt to it, doesn't it? No one from VP really has <laughs> to move after that. Yeah, and I always love the uh, when they open the door the other way around. And you can use it as like an extra piece of cover to like just just uh, crouch up and about up and down next to. But Elish has a, has a nice enough angle as is. Doesn't have to really worry about too much. As Virtus Pro, as you said, they they've hit the brakes. I don't know really what to do here. And now Elish again gonna get challenged. Flashed out, backs away, gives up some of the site, but he can request some support. Really, Virtus Pro is struggling here. They don't know what they have for free. Oh, if Elise requested support, it's not coming. No one's moved. He's still the only one down low. He sees the feet. That's a nice kill on Neo. Nitro is in ramp room waiting to come down. He's just guarding his back so Elise can't get backstabbed. 
It's going to be the vents. This is more of that vertical manipulation, but Twist is still up here. So is Stan as long. Stan could be a real nuisance, but only if he faces it at the right time. Twist not paying real attention either, but they're down to 25 seconds here. This is going to be right down to the wire as they do start to creep their way out. Stan could be like a guillotine from above. Bialy's head could go rolling, but Taz is already out there. Twist twi spins around spots one, but then Snacks pins him to the wall. We might actually have a shot at this now working out. Verlus Pro get a bomb plant, still have two alive, and they just heard one over by Hut. Bialy sconding away from the flash, doesn't want the fight, doesn't want it yet, finds an angle he can work with, peeks towards upper, he spots one. Now they know where two are. The picture slowly unraveling here as Snacks prepares himself as well, holding a very deep angle on it. Oh, they both peek out at the same time. It's just Bialy now in the 1v1, but the damage has been done to the two remaining players from Liquid. Oh, it's going to be Nitro holding on. There's recovery in sight. It's not all over. If Furnace Pro got this, that scoreline would be looking far more drastic already, and that second half would not be feeling so great. But maybe there's a chance to get up to six rounds and pull something together. And it almost feels like it would be a miracle at, at certain points in this half. It was looking extremely dire. Two big runs from Virtus Pro. This time, I, I mean, Liquid, they have the benefit now. It's going to be mostly pistols and Galilla, UMP, obviously, on the VP side. So definitely the, the arsenal favors Liquid. That was a great retake. It can be so difficult when you retake that bomb site to manage a player coming up vents because he's, he's at a disadvantage everywhere. But they time it, they coordinate it perfectly with the player coming out door. Able to beat Snacks. Fast pace from Virtus Pro, at least from Pasha. He's all the way down. He's already down. And Snacks is in vents per usual. JDM has a big job to do over at Ramp Room. That's where the main hit's going to come in, and he mistimes it. He looks like he wants to drop down, and Taz picks him off. Well, Virtus Pro have the advantage, but still such weak weaponry. And look at Stan's timing here. Two for one. He spots the bomb as well. This is going to be every bit of information made. He's going to speed up. He just wants to get these kills. Get him down. Oh, my God, what has happened? You can't have that. That was Stan, the no. as well. That could have saved the round. That would have been it. VP has a chance now. Oh, everything, <laughs> everything he did was so perfect up to God, that point, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really was. Well, Twist and Nitro left in a really tough spot. The lower bomb site is lost. There's Nitro, finds the timing on Neo, looking away. Remember, this was a very weak buy out of Virtus Pro initially. They've got three more to find, and it's all on Twist coming from Secret, and he can't win that battle. It's the CZ from Snacks that wins out. And Nitro, so much to do. He has the time or the HP to do it, although he's got a chance. He now knows where one more is. But it's, it's where's that final player? It doesn't matter. Taz will do enough, but you've got to feel there was such an opportunity in that round to get this to that six-round marker for Liquid. Give them that real viable shot into that second half. But five to ten, Virtus Pro known for their prowess on Nuke. This could be going to that third map, Jason. I feel it's uh, getting pretty likely at this point. I'm excited for it, but still, one more half to go. We'll find out who's going home, or is it a third map?
Virtus Pro are fighting for survival, and so far they're doing a darn good job of it too. Currently leading on the half, but there were moments in that game where you felt Liquid could have chipped away more, but some very quiet performances. The hell, look at Nitro. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nitro's doing good. That's uh, that's uh, not a bad effort in a, in a 5 to 10 half, so... Yeah. Yeah, he's leading the way quite strong. He's leading the server by, by a fair margin as yeah, well. Yeah, by a country mile. 10 to 5. I don't know what, Listen, what to I'll make of this. I'm a little worried after that last moment. All starts with the pistol round for Team Liquid, and then from there you need to get the benefit. You need to cause a lot of uh, economy resets on PP on the CT side. You need to make sure they don't have the utility. Nitro playing Snacks' his own game. Yeah, oh, and please. Snacks, he's waiting. Look at this guy. Oh. Nitro's good if I knew. That might just anger the beast from beneath. We'll see if they go for it. He's tempted. He's toying with the idea of it, but already Snacks is backed away. He, is he baiting this? Is he trying? Elise just killed Stan? I, what is going on this round? It's a 3v3 now, and Verse Pro are even confused. Why are there liquid on the rafters? Yeah, this is Where, getting what's, hectic. What's going on? <laughs> A lot, a lot of aggression towards Ramp Room, and they're, I mean, they're losing track of this Fiali coming out of Hunt. He gets one, he gets a second as well. Twist drops in events. There's no avenue to get back up. That was very, very scrappy. What just happened? It was. Uh, I mean, it, it was Liquid. I mean, Nitro gets an opening kill, which is great. And I think they want. They obviously want to pinch that upper bombsite by coming up rafters. But, I mean, it's just a great play from VP. Instead of really fighting for the bombsite, Fiali goes through Hut, clears out Lobby, comes back. I, let's see how this TK happens. Wow, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that is two TKs in this series so far for Leech. Yeah, he's, he's, he's taken his own teammates down. He saw what Stan did in the last half. He was like, you know what? <laughs> you deserve this. <laughs> Just, you know, a little bit of cruelty. It's like, don't ever fail me again. <laughs> <laughs> Long live the, the straight, king. The straight villain, yeah. Yeah, I love a bit of it. Um, but into this round, first Pro do have the lead. And this was the kind of building blocks for Liquid to get back into this game and finish it out in two and send Virtus Pro basically home. Uh, was to get that first round. Second half, always good. Give you maybe one, two more you got to feel, and then you've got the better step maybe coming into that gun round. But for now, it's Virtus Pro sitting with that 11th round in their pocket. A decent purchase, but quite light. Only one real rifle. Oh, no, excuse me. Two rifles here. Here comes Pasha. That scout doing some work. Pulls out the pistol. It proves to be his undoing. He does get one kill. Taz going to stick around for that Ooh. bonus money. Nice transfer over yes. to JDM. The timing, though, for Elige is going to be in his favor, but he misses the initial shot. That gives Taz the much-needed time to tap away at range. A 12th round for Virtus Pro, a big lead for them and Liquid. They've pretty much got to buy up in this third round. I mean, they have to close the gap. They can't give away a whole lot of rounds for free in this in this map if they want to close it out. So AK is being purchased, and Santa's Law is going to go for the UMP just so we can mm -hmm. get that full utility. Yep, always nice to have at least one guy. person. Yeah, he's a, he's a kind soul. As said, he just got alphaed by a leash, so <laughs> he kind of needs to just be like, all right, I'll, I'll be this guy, don't you worry. Harsha, though, adjusting already. Spots one. That was so quick. A leash gets punished now. Yeah, already one man advantage to Virtus Pro as they're going to try and make their way down towards lower. Again, though, another one of those instances where you're just like, why'd you pick that? Why'd you like not wait a second, for the smoke? A second before the perfect smoke wall pops up. Uh, so perhaps some frustration coming out on the Team Liquid yeah. side, but still. They did get a player to the stairs. Nitro's down there. He's been, like we mentioned, in one hell of a game. Mm. Well, we wait, basically. See if uh, Virtus Pro get overzealous to do anything. Pash is actually going to push towards Nitro and find him. So, yeah, VP is certainly not patient in this, but it's working. They're fine. They're, they're pretty golden at the moment. And it's, as I said, this is fight for survival, and, and it's kind of gone to the way we expected, if I'm honest, the, the way the maps have kind of played out. Um, and it's it's all eyes towards that final map. Gorgeous work from Twist there. Nice little shot, but I don't know how much impact it will have on the end outcome of this round. Not much. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it doesn't even look like Team Liquid is going to... I mean, you still kind of have to fight for this round just because you're down so much. Like I said, yeah. they can't just give rounds away for free. But you don't see a whole lot of avenues uh, for success for them to at least turn this into a winning venture. There's two players in upper, and they're both in rafters. Neo in a particularly difficult place to clear out, and that Molotov is going to slow things down even further. You can see Liquid can't even afford to wait for it. They just have to go towards door. This is where Neo is. Double kill for him. Two headshots straight down, 13 to 5. And it, it's it's nice to see Virus Pro being this consistent. Plow still honest. lives on nuke, Lauren. And just on nuke. Just on nuke. Just but no, it is good to see. It's probably nice for them in a way. You come off the back of the first map, which is 
quite shaky. You had Pasha doing well, which yeah. is good confidence. Come into this, you play like, you play well as a team. It's got to be a nice little feeling to you know, get that under your belt, kind of get into your head. Liquid going to have to go into that final map after a loss if it continues this way. So again, see if it affects them. We, we saw them having a great game on Mirage before, though. So really excited to see if this comes through and does go all the way. It does seem as though it's quite likely at this point. One Tech 9 and a couple of light pistols invested. That Molotov is going to hinder the entirety of it. And Stax is loving it. He knows what he's done. Looks like the Border Collie just herding the sheep around as he does uh, have a little chew towards one. JDM gone. And Viali waits at the bottom. No escape, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. Stanislaw will try and find one. Gets the kill. Doesn't really run to the so pistol. Taz is going to take him out. Clinical from DP. One more chance for Team Liquid to get some semblance of a comeback started. But even so, even if they win this, even if they win, I, it's just a long road back. And as I mentioned, I think, I mean, we saw the monstrous T side at Avertis Pro, and I, I've mentioned a couple times, I think the great strength of this team is, is the rotations on the CT side, um, which is something that we saw Team Liquid's rotations themselves weren't all that stellar, <laughs> as I get a VHS rewinded <laughs> in the games. <laughs> There's been so many years since I've heard, like, those rewind sounds. Yeah, that That's, great. Uh, thank you for that. Nostalgia. Little, uh, yeah, flashback. I like that. Twist, though, straight up. Well, how is he this far out? No one's watching him. That's insane. I don't know what they've done to pull this much attention elsewhere, but they pulled a real good fake. They applied pressure in some places that just blew their minds, apparently, because they just walked out up and got the plant. No one there to stop them. Uh, it may not be enough. It is down to a three on three. How much does Taz want to commit? Still plenty of time in the bomb still for VP to make this retake happen if they want. Snacks is going to start pressuring in. Elijah on top of the hut has a big job to do. Pasha and Taz trying to coordinate as well. There's the flash out. He looks away. He had a chance to go for the legs. He wins that fight. That might have been the critical one. And Twist takes out Taz up top. So it's just Pasha. And he might go for a kill, but just wants to save the ult. Ooh, he's going to have to fight for this. Nice. Did expect a second floor? How is he alive? One HP and he stayed alive. Oh, my word. Those bullets felt closer than they were, but... Bless his soul. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. Uh, 14 to 6, Jason. All right, there's, there's, you know, windows. Tiny little crack of a window opening. They see the word opportunity behind them. The tiniest them. of windows, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is unlikely, because let's say that round, the way they picked that up, was a very aggressive upper hit that just seemed to work. I don't know how they pulled that much attention elsewhere, um, but, it, but they did. They managed it. But uh, I don't know if it's something you can repeat, and we're going to find out now. It's going to be JDM. Quiet thus far has a chance, and it's Bialy again, the big denier of everything they want to do. Neo this time, all oh, eyes trained towards up, but they're not getting away with it again. I was going to say, it's not going to work twice, VP. I don't think they necessarily did anything to pull attention away the last time. That's a nice oh. shot from Pasha, almost the follow-up. Nitro, who's had a phenomenal game, as we mentioned a couple times, in a one-on-two. He's got a chance here, but Taz beats him to the punch, beats the timing. And yeah, I was going to say, I don't think Liquid necessarily did anything to pull attention away. I think it was just, you know, the tactic that Virtus Pro called was just a very weak upper defense at the start of the round, and, and, and Liquid just got fortunate. Ooh, hello. Pasha is just so good when he plays like this. That's not fair. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Be nice. All right, why not? Look, let, let him have his fun, all right? It's been a while since we've seen you this Pasha. It's been years. Yeah, yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Look, I, I, if I'm honest, I'm excited for Mirage. As much as, you know, it'd be cool for Liquid to win it in two and all that jazz, I want to see Mirage. I want to see both of these teams in a kind of... Oh, there it is. There's Snax. Bye, Nitro. Hey, he's, so listen, he's been doing that, like, the majority of this game. Most of it coming from the T side. He finally gets his reward. <laughs> and Pasha is just still a monster. There it is. All right, this suddenly gets exciting for me and you, I'm pretty sure. We get to see Mirage, something that looked great for Liquid earlier. But now Virtus Pro have reminded us they are a team that can do wondrous things, but they need to do it on that final map. This is to stay alive here, of course, at ESL1 New York. So guys, do stay tuned. We'll be back after a break with the desk to break down this last map.